Hello, viewers. Thank you once again for joining Alpha One Canada's 2015 Virtual Education Summit. My name is Duncan Lam, and I'm your host. We're very happy to have our speaker here today, Chad McFedrin, a financial consultant from the Investors Group. Chad will be speaking to us today about planning for individuals with disabilities. Chad, do you mind saying a few words to our viewers before we begin? Maybe share with us your areas of expertise and, and experience. Thank you again, Duncan, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I have been with Investors Group for eight years and have developed a very successful practice and shared a, one philosophy that I've developed my practice with. And that's very simple, is put clients in a better place than they were before they met me. So I'm excited to be here and uh, looking forward to speak about individuals with disabilities. Thank you very much, Chad. Well, we're here today specifically to talk about planning for individuals with disabilities. What are your thoughts on that, Chad? Well, Duncan, before I start with the, talking about uh, planning for individuals with disabilities, I think we need to digress a little bit and talk a little bit about financial planning. Um, and I'd like to start here, just like in the other video, by saying that sometimes uh, people with disabilities especially, and, and individuals in general, pay a lot of time, to, uh, pay a lot of time and, and attention towards their health, but sometimes neglect their wealth. So I, I need uh, to show the importance of, of spending time and, and developing a, a true financial plan. As talking about the end of life planning, uh, I'll, I'll share some similar uh, similarities in that we need to develop a team of professionals. I'm gonna mention three professionals in general and, and then these are in no particular order. But first, uh, we need to find a lawyer, a good lawyer that has our best interests at, at, at place. The second is having a, a, an accountant in place or a tax preparer, depending on the severity of your, your, your case. And then the third individual is, is a financial planner or a financial consultant. I think it's very, very important that we, we have these individuals in place uh, to guide us through and make sure that we're doing everything that we can, uh, both tax-wise and income-wise and investment-wise, uh, to have a successful financial plan. And then ultimately, we always focus on the four pillars of financial planning. Income, investments, insurance, and then obviously end of life planning. So when talking about individuals with disabilities per se, again, I'd like to, to, to stress that we do need to have a team of professionals in place, as well as focusing on a financial plan and the four pillars of financial planning. All right, Chad, it sounds like surrounding ourselves with a team of professionals is the right place to start. But where does someone go from there in regards to planning for individuals with disabilities? Can you elaborate on that? Thanks, Duncan. Absolutely. As of everything that we do, we try to uh, plan for things that be before they happen and make sure that we have contingencies put in place under the insurance category of the four pillars of financial planning. However, we do uh, on occasion take on individuals that are already disabled and walk them through a process and, and try to get them into programs that, that they qualify for. So I'll throw out a little disclaimer here, and I, and I think I have to do this because it, it's very, very hard to discuss individuals with disabilities with not having a specific case in front of you. Uh, this is done uh, for two reasons. First of all, most of the programs that we're going to talk about today are jurisdiction-based. Um, they differ from province to province. Um, I'm located in Ontario, so I'm going to be a little bit biased and talk uh, mainly about Ontario programs, but also the Government of Canada programs. But individuals that are looking, again, I'm going to throw out another disclaimer and say that it's much easier to, to put together a team of professionals to guide you through this process other than trying to navigate these websites and these programs by yourself. However, if you're trying to look at or, or research some of these programs and you wanna do that before you see uh, these professionals, um, then there's uh, three main websites that are, that are uh, I'll point you in those directions. 
uh, first of all, the CRA website, uh, our Canada Revenue Agency website, and that's specifically going to deal with the disability tax credit. Uh, also, Service Canada's website, which is going to deal mostly with the, the CPP disability or Canada Pension Plan disability. And then Ontario's uh, provincial website, which is going to do with uh, ODSB and, and, and working, uh, working income tax benefit. So again, if you're not located in Ontario, please seek your provincial website. And I'm sure that the, each province has great programs in place that, that you need to research. Moving from there, I'm going to touch a little bit about uh, and start with the Canada Pension Disability Plan. And that's simply doing an application. Uh, part of the application is filled out by yourself and part is filled out by your doctor. Submitting the application, it goes through uh, obviously an adjournment process from individuals from the, from the CPP board and, and you're either accepted or denied. Um, it's an actual monthly benefit, okay, that's uh, for individuals that are disabled. And that's something that you can seek out uh, on a case by case basis. Uh, what I'm going to talk about next is is kind of more in my realm, if you will, uh, of being a, a somewhat of a, a self-proclaimed tax specialist, um, is the dis disability tax credit. The disability tax credit is is kind of the basis, I think, for for all of these programs. And again, all of these programs are independent of each other, except for a few. And and the disability tax credit, though it's independent of uh, the RDSP, which I'm going to have a good friend of mine and colleague. Maurizio Mastriani to speak about in a few minutes. Um, that is the basis. You do have to uh, qualify for the disability tax credit before you apply for some of some of these other programs. The disability tax credit is a credit, not a deduction, on your income tax return. And and some of the most popular misconceptions is uh, for individuals that are not making any income or or, or very low income. They don't think that they need to qualify or, or they don't need to, need to, to, to uh, apply for the disability tax credit because it wouldn't benefit them. However, that's, that is a misconception because it could benefit either your spouse or somebody that's taking care of you. That, that disability tax credit is transferable to other individuals in certain cases. So that's something that you may think of just because you may not be making any income. It doesn't mean that your spouse or, or uh, person that you're dependent on uh, is making income. So it could help them on their tax return, which obviously puts more money in their family's pocket. So we want to make sure that we're, we're not opting out of programs just because we don't think that we, we may qualify or we don't think that it's beneficial to us. We need to make sure that we're, we're looking at all of these programs and, and applying for them and making sure that we are eligible for them. So as I said, uh, there are very uh, vast amounts of programs out there. And I think that individuals need to, again, I can't stress it enough and I hate to repeat myself, but seek a team of professionals and they will guide you through it. This is not something that I think that the, an individual should take on, them, on themselves. So as I mentioned before, I am going to introduce my colleague, uh, Maurizio Mastriani. He's become what uh, what I think is, is a specialist in the, in the RDSP program. Um, so I, I will definitely pass it over to him. And he's going to explain that program as well as is, is some, uh, some minor touches on Henson Trusts and things of that nature. So please, uh, Maurizio. Thanks, Chad, for the uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, my name is Maurizio Mastriani. I'm a consultant investors group. I've uh, been with the firm for uh, five years, and, and uh, I've taken on uh, a big role in, in, this, in this area of our registered disability savings plans. Uh, I call it RDSP, uh, as there's some family members that I have that uh, have a disability, and there's a lot involved in terms of planning uh, for themselves financially. Uh, an RDSP is a federal government uh, uh, program. There are grants and bonds available for those that qualify to obtain. Um, in order to open up an RDSP, you do need the uh, disability tax credit approved, as Chad mentioned. Uh, you have to be a resident of Canada, have a valid social, social insurance number, and also be 59 years of age or younger. Uh, so that's how you qualified to open up an RDSP. 
the next step would be uh, to decide uh, uh, whether you qualify for grants or bonds, and that's income tested. Um, it could be uh, tested on the income of the beneficiary or their parents. It depends on age. Um, so again, as Chad mentioned, please uh, seek le uh, financial help from your consultant um, because there's a lot of moving facets to determine uh, how much grant and bond you can receive in a year. Um, the entire benefit of an RDSP is that you are allowed to get over the lifetime up to $70,000 in a grant and up to $20,000 in bonds. Um, so proper planning uh, will help uh, to achieve the maximum grant and bond available to you or to your loved one. At age 59, uh, well, technically age 60, the RDSP uh, will have to be Yes, yeah, so you have to take income from the RDSP. It will be dissolved into an income stream. And really, the RDSP is meant for retirement for those that have a disability. That's the main purpose. Um, if you were to put money in in the short term and make a withdrawal, uh, there could be uh, grants that have to be called back. So again, seek uh, professional advice from the financial planning side with respect to regular disability savings plans. Um, the other aspect that Chad mentioned, when planning for those that have a disability, uh, he referred to as a Henson Trust. This is where you're gonna need legal counsel on how to set up uh, some of these things. And the purpose of a Henson Trust is to prevent the one with the disability to receive an inheritance in their own name. And the reason why you want that is they could lose or will lose, uh, for example, Ontario, the Ontario Disability Support Program um, where they lose their monthly income that they receive and the healthcare costs. So there are provisions in place that uh, it will help in the planning side for those with a disability. Thank you, Mauricio, for that great information. Um, again, uh, I can't say this enough times, uh, when, when planning for individuals with disabilities, because of things that are income sensitive and, and certain programs you can't have over a certain limit of income, Again, seeking a professional is, 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 is of the utmost importance in this category. But I would like to shed just a few minutes on talking about people uh, that are not suffering from a disability at this current time and know that when we do plan for, for, for families and individuals, that there is contingencies that we do put in place. Um, there's private plans that you can you can purchase uh, that if you do become disabled, uh, there's an income stream there. There's also uh, many individuals through their through their their workforce have plans that are put in place, such as long-term care and short-term disability. So that's another way of uh, trying to gain an income stream if something does happen. So we try our best to put things in place before they happen or or in case they happen, if you will. And again, uh, drawing back to the, the four pillars of financial planning, that's why it's so important to have a financial plan so that you have these things in place just in case something happens. But when we're looking at individuals that are already suffering from a disability, again, there are a vast majority of programs out there that individuals can seek and, and to gain an income stream, and also to prepare for their retirement or prepare for their loved one's retirement. And, and that's, I think, is important too, that uh, uh, an individual or a minor is suffering from a disability or your child or, or someone that, that, that you're uh, a, depend, a dependent for, I think that you, you, you definitely need to seek out uh, and, and, and look at these programs because they, they can be very, very beneficial. So again, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Duncan and, and thank, uh, thank you for your time and thank you for being here and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. This concludes today's featured presentation. On behalf of Alpha One Canada, I would like to thank Chad McFedrin and Maurizio Mastroianni for taking the time to prepare and speak to our viewers. It is good to know whom and where to turn to when we need help to prepare for unforeseen circumstances. 
Please don't forget to check out the rest of our 2015 Virtual Education Summit featured videos on our website, www.alpha1canada.ca. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you.